So today we've got a nice problem from the math magazine, and this is problem 1608. So it starts with a definition. So we'll say that a natural number n is wonderful base b if n divides the number, well, 1, 1, 1, 1, well, just a bunch of 1s, base b. And then our goal is to describe, well, what are the base b wonderful numbers? Now, before we get started, let's recall that every natural number has a unique base b expansion. And it goes like this. So if the digits are xk, xk minus 1, all the way down x1, x0, base b, that is x0 plus x1 times b plus x2 times b squared, all the way up to xk times b to the k. So each you know, placement of the digit corresponds to a different power of the base b, just like base 10 or a decimal expansion. And I'd like to point out here that the digits must come from the set 0, 1, 2, up to b minus 1. Just like in our base 10 number system, the digits are 0 to 9. Okay, so let's start by supposing that we know that n divides the number 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, base b. Okay, and then, well, let's also suppose that the GCD of n and b is equal to d. Now, why are we looking at the GCD? Well, notice that we're talking about divisibility here. And the notion of the GCD is, well, a really important notion when you're talking about divisibility. So it kind of makes sense to talk about the GCD. So all of that setup means that we have the following three facts. So we have n equals d times x for some integer x. I won't write for some integer x, but that's what it means to be a divisor of n. And if d is the greatest common divisor of n and b, then it's a divisor of n. Okay, we also know that b is equal to d times y, and we know that this number, that's just a bunch of ones base b is a multiple of n, so we can write it as n times z. And then I guess while we're at it, we'll just say up here that there exists x, y, and z. These are actually all natural numbers because we're within the natural numbers in this setting. We don't have to go out to the non-positive integers, such that the following three equations hold. Okay, now we want to mash these equations together a little bit. Okay, so let's start with this n times z, and we'll put this n equals dx inside of it. That's going to mean that we have d times x times z, notice that's the same thing as n times z, equals, well, this thing with a bunch of 1's base b, but we can expand that using our formula down here to 1 plus b plus b squared all the way down to b to the k. That's, of course, if we assume that here we've got k plus 1 total digits. So let's go ahead and make that assumption. But now we can put this expression for b inside of this. And observe, that's going to give us 1 plus, let's see, d times y plus d squared times y squared all the way up to d to the k times y to the k. But I might as well write that as 1 plus d times, I'll just use the letter w to mean everything that we get when we smush all of the rest of that together. And that's just... Uh, what we get from factoring a d out of this stuff that I have in orange parentheses. Okay, nice. But now we can solve that for 1, and we'll have 1 is equal to dxz minus dw, but we can factor a d out of that, and we have xz minus w. But check it out. We've got 1 factors as a product of natural numbers. We know that these are positive integers just by our setup here. But the only way that 1 can factor as a product of positive integers is for both of these to be equal to 1. In particular, we have d equals 1. So let's see what we've really shown here so far. We showed that if we assume that n divides this 
string of ones base b, then that implies that the GCD of n and b, the base, is equal to one. In other words, those are relatively prime. Okay, so, well, that's cool, but that doesn't exactly describe all of the base b wonderful numbers. It just says that if we've got a wonderful number, it has to have this property. What we'd really like is perhaps to show that the converse of the statement is also true. So let's see if we can do that. Okay, so we just showed that if n divides this big string of ones, then the GCD of n and the base had to be equal to one. And well, I'd like to, before we really dive into the converse, which we'll show is true, I'd like to look at this definition a little bit and make sure that we understand exactly what it's saying right here. So in dividing this big string of ones, well, this isn't a fixed big string, so we want to read this as n divides some number that can be represented in base b with only ones. So n may divide 1, 1 base b, or 1, 1, 1 base b, or 1, 1, 1, 1 base b. It's just got to divide one of them. Okay, so now that we've got that in mind, what we'd like to show now is if we suppose that the GCD of n and b is equal to 1, then we'd like to be able to find some, you know, string of ones that is divisible by n, which means that we probably want to construct the length of that string of ones. Okay, but let's see how we might do that. So we've got the GCD of n and b is 1, so keeping in mind Euler's generalization of Fermat's little theorem, that leads us to the following congruence very, very quickly, and that is b to the power of phi of n is congruent to 1 mod n, where phi of n is Euler's totient function. It's counting the number of things relatively prime to n between 1 and n. Okay, but observe that this is equivalent to saying that b to the phi of n minus 1 is a multiple of n. In other words, n divides that. But then now let's observe that we can factor a b minus 1 out of that and we're left with 1 plus b plus b squared all the way up to b to the phi of n minus 1. So is a multiple of n. Now this might seem nice and that's because this second term in our factorization here is in fact just a string of a bunch of ones base b. But what we have is n divides the product of that with b minus one. So since it divides the product of that with b minus one, well, we're not guaranteed that n divides this number right here. So what we'd like to do is somehow tweak n a little bit or really tweak this factorization a little bit so somehow we can cancel out this b minus 1. And actually, that's going to take us to the very end. So let's see how that's going to go. So the important thing to do here is to also note the following thing that's also true all of the time, and that's the GCD of b with b minus 1 is always 1. Any two numbers that are consecutive are always relatively prime. Okay. But immediately that tells us that the GCD of n times b minus 1 with b is also 1. Because we're taking the product of two things that are relatively prime to b. But now observe that that means that, let's see, b to the power phi of n times b minus 1 is congruent to 1 modulo. It's not mod n anymore. It's mod n times b minus 1. Okay, great. But what does this mean? Well, this means that b, well, this means that b to the phi of n times b minus 1 minus 1 is a multiple of this crazy number that we've just concocted, uh, n times b minus 1. Okay, cool. But now let's introduce some notation to make everything work out a little bit better. 
So maybe let's set k plus 1 equal to c of n times b minus 1. But observe, that means that b to the k plus 1 minus 1, well, that's a multiple of n times b minus 1. So that means we can write it as n times x times b minus 1. But now we can factor out that left-hand side, and we'll get b minus 1 times b to the k plus b to the k minus 1 all the way down b plus 1 is equal to n times x times b minus 1. And, well, you see that we've done exactly what we wanted to do here. We've fixed the potential confusion by building a b minus 1 on both sides of this equation that we can cancel out. And then we're left with this number right here, which is in fact just a bunch of ones if we express it base b, is a multiple of n. In other words, n divides this number. So did we do it? I think we did. So we started up here by supposing that the GCD of n and b was 1, and we ended down here with n divides some number that's just uh, a bunch of 1s when expressed base b. And we know exactly how many 1s we need. And how many is that? Well, it's going to be phi of n times b minus 1 minus 1 total 1s. And that's a good place to start.